Let's go into more detail about what in phase and what out of phase means. So in phase, so it says here two points are in phase that when they are separated by a whole number of wavelengths, of complete wavelengths. And then obviously out of phase is when they are separated by more than a whole number, or like 1.5 wavelengths or something like that. So let me show you this diagram to illustrate it. This is the best way for me to show you what in phase and what out of phase means and how to find one wave, basically, one complete wave. So remember we spoke about crest, so P is a crest, P is a crest, this over here is a crest. I'm going to call it P with a little line like that, just to show you that those are in phase. They occupy the same space on the wave, on the pulse, and this is also a crest. I'm going to call it P with two lines. I hope you can understand and see that those are in phase. They're both on the peaks of the waves, the crests of the waves, so those are in phase. Now, if I ask you to find a wavelength, it'll either be between this P and that P, or another wavelength, the second wave, would be between this P and that P. So basically what I'm trying to say is between our first P and our last P over here, how many waves do I have? Well, that's a point in phase, that's a point in phase. Connect them, that's one wavelength. That's a point in phase and that's a point in phase. Connect them, that's our second wavelength. So two waves, okay. Let's do R. R is also kind of easy because it's on the trough. So where would the next successive point in phase be for R? It would be here. Okay, it's also on the trough, R. And this would be the third point in phase. Okay, so all of these are in phase. Why? Because they're all on a trough. So if I want to find one wavelength starting at R, you would end at the next point, the next successive point in phase. So that would be one wavelength. Let's do the second wavelength. It would be from this point in phase, the trough, to the next trough. So there's two waves. I hope that makes sense. Now, what gets when it gets more tricky is when we deal with Q, S, and T, because they're not on a crest, they're not on a trough. So you have to think very carefully about this. Look at where Q is on the wave. You, get, you go up towards the peak, towards the crest at P, and then you come down back to the equilibrium position, and then you find Q. So would this over here, think about this, would that be a point in phase with the initial Q? Would these two be in phase? I hope you're saying no. The reason why is because, remember, to get Q over here, we went, we started at the crest and we went down to the equilibrium position. So what we'd have to do to get the next Q is we'd have to go up to the crest, okay, there's the crest, and we would have to go down to the equilibrium position. That would be the next Q in phase. And then I hope you can find the third Q. It's not over here, okay? It would be up to the crest and then down back to the equilibrium position. That's my next point in phase. So to get one wavelength starting at Q, you would go from Q to the next point in phase. That's one wavelength. I hope you can see it. And a second wave would start at this Q, it would go up to the crest and back down to the equilibrium position. That's my second wave. Okay, what about S? Now, S is kind of like you've started at the equilibrium position, gone up to the crest, gone down to the trough, and just after you pass the trough, you get an S. Okay, so the next one would start here. Start at the equilibri equilibrium position, go up to the crest, go down to the trough, and just after the trough, that's where you would get your second S. I hope you see it. That and that, those are in phase. So if I have to connect them, that would give me one complete wavelength. And my next S would be over here. Let's do our last one, which is T. So the way I see T is it's just before you hit the crest. Just before you hit the crest. So this would be in phase with T. Just before you hit the crest. The next one in phase would be here just before you go up to hit the crest. I hope that makes sense. And if I want to find the next one, I can't even find the next one because this picture is not complete. It would be somewhere over here. 
just before you hit the crest. So I really hope that helps you understand the difference between in phase and out of phase. So a question that you could get in your exam could be something like, they could give you a wave like the one behind me, and they could say, give a pair of points that are in phase. So you need to look at the picture, and I think the most obvious one for us to go with would be these ones, the crests, right? Those are all in phase. So you could say P and U, or P and A, because they're both crests, P and A are, in, are both crests, so they're both points in phase. They're not successive points in phase because they're not next to each other, but they're still points in phase. So every crest on this wave, no matter if it's thousands of kilometers away, will be in phase with each other. Um, something else that we could do, we could do U and A, or U and whatever. Yeah, let's say A. Can you find another point in phase that's not a crest or not a trough? So try and look for a more complicated one. I want you to try and find the point that is in phase or points, there could be more than one, that is in phase with Q. So try and find the points that in that's in phase with Q. Pause the screen if you need to. So the points that is in phase with Q. So Q's over here. Remember that a nice way to think of it is Q comes just after you pass a crest. It's at the equilibrium position just after you pass a crest. So it could be W because look at where W is. It's at the equilibrium position just after you pass a crest. So it could be Q and W or it could be Q and C because look at where C is. It's at the equilibrium position just after you pass a crest. So I hope that makes sense. Let me give you one more question. So my question says, are the following pairs of points in phase or out of phase? So let's start with T and V. So pause the screen if you need to try it yourself. T and V. Look at T. Here's T. Look at V. Are they in phase or out of phase? I hope that you said out of phase. Why is it out of phase? Because look at T. T is just before you're about to approach the crest, and V is just after you're about, you are just after you approach the crest, um, finish the crest. So how are they in phase? They're not on the same points on the wave. They're on opposite points of the little pulse, if you think of it like that. What about W and C? Think about that. W and C. Well, W is here's the crest. There's W on the equilibrium position. Just after you pass the crest, there's W. Look at the next crest, A. Just after you pass that crest, you get C. So they are at the same point on the wave. They are in phase. They are separated by a whole number of wavelengths. In fact, they are separated by one wavelength. I hope you can see that. S and Y. So here's S and here's Y. Are they in phase or are they out of phase? So S is just below the equilibrium position and it's going up towards a crest. Y is also just below the equilibrium position and it's going up towards the next crest. So yes, S and Y are in phase. What about C and D? So I've drawn C and D up here. Here's C, here's D. I hope you said those are out of phase. Why are they out of phase? Because look at C, we have just passed a crest when we get to C. It's on the equilibrium position. I know D is also on the equilibrium position. But it's not just after you pass a crest that you get to D. It's just before you get to the crest. So this would be, the, this A would be in phase with this one. So let's call it A with two lines. So C is just after you pass A. But D is just before you get to the next A. So C and D are not in phase. I hope that helps with in phase and out of phase. You do need to know that in order to understand the wavelength and how to find the wavelength of a transverse wave.